The Grumman F6F Hellcat was an American naval fighter design that served primarily for the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marines, and the British Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm during the latter half of World War II. Best known as a replacement for the venerable Grumman F4F Wildcat and rival of the Mitsubishi A6M0, the Hellcat soon came into its own as a frontline fighter that helped push the U.S. Navy across the Pacific in late 1943 to the end of the war with Japan in September 1945. Pilots fell in love with the F6F as it was easy to fly, maneuverable, and was durable enough to bring these pilots home safely. The Hellcat gained fame as a U.S. Navy ace maker in the Pacific Theater and is among the legendary World War II fighters to this day. In this video, we will cover the origins of the aircraft and its different variations and modifications in use. Soon after the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation's F4F Wildcat was further along in development in 1938, the firm began studies for its eventual replacement slated to be built years down the road. Becoming an official concept in 1940, Grumman relegated its F4F replacement as the G50. Though there were similar styling cues to the F4F, the G50 was a completely new, clean sheet design and was a major improvement on the past barrel-shaped Grumman naval fighters. The most notable changes were that the design was noticeably larger than the F4F to handle a larger power plant, the wings were placed lower on the fuselage, and the retractable landing gear would fold into the wings by tilting 90 degrees. No longer would pilots need to hand crank their landing gear into the fuselage. Starting off as a 1 16th scale model for wind tunnel tests, the US Navy would order two prototypes for the G50 in June 1941. Less than a year after the prototype request from the US Navy, the first prototype ordered, officially known as the XF6F1, appeared from Grumman's hangars in early June 1942. The aircraft that rolled out was of an all-metal, stressed skin, semi-monocoque fuselage design and featured armor protection in mind for the pilot, engine, and oil cooler. The power plant for the new Grumman was a 1700 horsepower Wright R2610 Cyclone air-cooled, two-row, 14-cylinder radial engine. This engine was currently being used in Grumman's new torpedo bombers, the TBF Avenger. The prototypes would not be armed, but the design called for six Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns as the main armament, three in each wing, and a manual folding wing layout for aircraft carrier storage like the F4F4 Wildcat before it. Beneath the cockpit floor were three self-sealing fuel cells able to hold a combined 250 gallons of fuel. First test flown in late June 1942, the plane practically flew off the drawing board and was noted to have satisfactory flying characteristics. The second initial requested prototype, dubbed the XF6F2, was to be fitted with a turbocharged Wright R2616 radial engine. However, this prototype design was not built at the same time as the XF6F1. This prototype is discussed later in the video. Over in Europe, the British Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm were flying the export version of the F4F Wildcat, dubbed the Martlet, and were convinced the next line of Grumman fighters needed a much more powerful engine to combat German aircraft. This was also confirmed by U.S. Navy pilots flying the F4F Wildcat in the Pacific, facing Japanese aircraft in early 1942. Most concerningly, the Mitsubishi A6M0, after their first clash at the Battle of the Coral Sea on May 7-8, 1942. The Wildcat lacked in speed, rate of climb, and range when compared to its Japanese fighter counterparts. As one example, it was well documented that F4F3 ace and Medal of Honor recipient Edward Butch O'Hare visited Grumman to talk about his experience with the Wildcat and provided his two cents on improvements. Other changes included visibility updates, such as placing the seat higher in the cockpit and tilting the fuselage slightly down towards the cowling. With this important and real-world input, the second prototype actually built was dubbed the XF6F3. This aircraft was fitted with the Pratt & Whitney R2810 double wasp air-cooled two-row 18-cylinder radial engine with a two-stage mechanical supercharger, pushing out 2,000 horsepower. The airframe was strengthened to handle this new power plant. This engine would also be installed in the Hellcat service competitor, the Vought F4U Corsair, as well as the U.S. Army's Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. The XF6F3 would be flown in late July 1942, and again prove satisfactory to requirements. Luckily, the only serious issues on both prototypes were tail flutter, which was quickly fixed by strengthening the rear fuselage. The Hellcat was ready for production. D 
due to the ongoing war in the Pacific that was not currently in the favor to the United States, the U.S. Navy ordered the production of the XF-6F-3 in late May 1942, nearly a whole month in advance of the test flight of the XF-6F-1. At this time, the U.S. Navy had recently fought in the Battle of the Coral Sea earlier in the month. The current outlook of the war was not as promising as one may have thought, so the normal bureaucracy of formal plane testing, then ordering, was bypassed. Also note the tide-changing battle of Midway did not occur yet. Luckily for the U.S. Navy, the test flights for the, both the XF-6F-1 and 3 in June and July were promising, and the production model would be ready to be thrown into the fight off the drawing board. Grumman was well prepared for the eventual green light for the production of the F-6F Hellcat. All production of the F-4F Wildcat and the newly commissioned TBF Avenger were moved to the idling plants of General Motors Eastern Aircraft earlier in the year. Plant number three, a new production space, was built at Grumman and Bethpage on Long Island, New York, and was completed in early June 1942, even before the XF-6F-1's first test flight. Now dubbed the F-6F-3, the first of these models rolled off the line in October 1942 and joined its first Navy squadron in February 1943. The F-6F-3's max speed was 375 miles per hour at 23,000 feet, with a service ceiling of 38,000 feet. Range was around 1,090 miles at cruising altitude and settings. The aircraft soon featured a center storage pylon under the fuselage, which was able to hold the often fitted 150-gallon external drop tank to give the Hellcat extra range. With its external combat drop tank, which was also used for fairing aircraft from the factory, range increased to 1,590 miles. As one of Grumman's main design principles were to over-engineer their aircraft and bring pilots home safely, the Hellcats were equipped with a curved armored windscreen and more than 200 pounds of armor for the pilot and for the oil tank and oil cooler. Some slight changes from the prototype included the removal of the propeller spinner, a new propeller, the exhaust channels were reduced, and the landing gear doors were reduced from the original bulky design. As for the propeller, a new 13-foot, 1-inch diameter Hamilton Standard, full-feathering, hydromatic propeller replaced the Curtis electric propeller. The production model included a Mark 8 reflector gun sight and six Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns staggered in the wings, with a total of 2,400 rounds, 400 per gun. Late production F6F3s featured an upgraded power plant, the Pratt & Whitney R2810W radial engine with a water methanol boost that provided 10% more power for short periods of time. The water tank was fitted behind the cockpit and was filled from the spine. With this emergency power, the engine was rated at 2200 horsepower. On these late production models, the cowling was tighter around the engine, and the exhaust stack bulges were removed on each side, and both lower cowl flaps were eliminated. As for additional ordnance, the aircraft was equipped with six stub pylons for zero length 5 inch rockets, storage pylons, one under each wing and under the fuselage, which was already available to hold the extra drop tank, were able to hold 1,000 pounds each of bombs. A total of 4,402 F6F3s were produced and ended production in spring 1944. This includes all subvariants and those in foreign use. With the development of airborne radar, the U.S. Navy began implementing the AIA radar set into land-based Lockheed PV-1 Venturas and Vought F4U-2 Corsairs for nighttime interception operations. Due to the Corsairs' ongoing issues with becoming a safe and reliable carrier-capable aircraft in 1943, the U.S. Navy looked to Grumman to produce a carrier-based night fighter variant of its new F6F3 fighter. This came in two variants, the 3E and the 3N. The former, the E variant, was the interim solution while the N variant was being developed. 18 F6F3s were converted to the E, which was equipped with a Westinghouse APS-4 radar in the cockpit, with a scanner in a radar pond hung from a Mark 51 bomb rack under the starboard wing. This was dubbed as the Rabam. The cockpit featured red lighting for nighttime operations as well as an anti-glare windscreen. With this radar set, the aircraft was effective for searching, navigation, and bombing. However, not the best suited for nighttime interceptions. 24 aircraft were originally ordered for the N variant, and eventually 205 would be built after its combat introduction in November 1943. This version was far more capable than the E variant. The set was a Sperry APS-6 intercept radar, far superior to the APS-4. The plane also featured an APN-1 radio altimeters, as well as an 
APX2 IFF identification friend or foe system. The scanner was no longer in a pod on the bomb rack, but installed in a ray dome on the far edge of the starboard wing. The scope, which featured search, intercept, and gun aim modes, was in the center of the instrument panel. The six Browning M250 caliber machine guns themselves were bore sighted to converge at their radar aiming point and then realigned fore and aft. Pilots were concerned that the ray dome would alter flight performance, which would actually decrease top speed by 20 miles per hour when installed. The Hellcat would soon become the top American night fighter during the war. In April 1944, Grumman began production of the improved F6F5. It technically was not a drastic update from the F6F3, as throughout production of the late Dash 3s, many minor improvements were made on the aircraft rolling off the line. It was well known that late F6F3s and the early F6F5s were virtually externally indistinguishable. Only by checking the planes bureau number and paint scheme would determine which aircraft one was looking at. An overall gloss sea blue aircraft was more likely an F6F5, while a tricolor aircraft was likely an F6F3. The F6F5 Hellcat featured many of the improvements and changes of late model F6F3s and more. The power plant stayed consistent with the late F6F3, a Pratt & Whitney R2800-10W water-injected radial. With this engine, top speed reached nearly 400 miles per hour and rate of climb increased. A servo and fixed trim tab were both installed on ailerons and the tail section was strengthened. As for the cockpit, 30 pounds of additional armor reinforced the pilot and included a flat armored glass windscreen rather than the curved front windscreen of the F6F3. The canopy was also simplified. The first 1000 F6F5s maintained the aft window on each side behind the canopy like on the F6F3s before it. However, any aircraft afterward omitted these windows, allowing any crews to visually determine an F6F3 and F6F5. The F6F5 was able to hold the hanging ordnance and fuel as the F6F3. Three store pylons, two below the wings and one below the fuselage for bombs or a drop tank, and six stub pylons for zero length five inch rockets. Two new armaments were tested on this model. The first scheme tested the Hellcat's ability to be used as a torpedo bomber. Slung below the Hellcat's center fuselage was a Mark 13 aerial torpedo. However, this scheme never went into combat. The second was the F6F5's use of Tiny Tim unguided rockets. This new 11.75 inch air to ground and anti shipping 1200 pound rocket was developed in 1944 and contained a 148 pound warhead to wreak havoc on Japanese targets and shipping outside of anti aircraft range. Two could be mounted under the wing route near the fuselage on each wing. In June 1946, F 6F5s would be used as the first Blue Angels, the flight demonstration squadron of the U.S. Navy. These were painted glossy blue with gold leaf lettering. The aircraft were weight reduced and had their armament removed. After 10 appearances, the Hellcats were replaced by the F-8F Bearcats in August 1946 as the main demonstration aircraft. After the war, F-6F5s were also used as test beds for new aircraft ordnance, such as air-to-air -air missiles. A total of 7,780 F-6F5s were produced and production ended in November 1945. This includes all subvariants and those in foreign use. With the success of the night fighter variants of the F6F3, an unspecified number of F6F5s were converted similarly to the F6F3E. The F6F5E featured improvements such as the upgraded engine and performance of the F6F5, along with the bomb rack mounted ray bomb and APS4 radar set. In addition to the F6F5E, Grumman built 1434 F6F5N night variants. The same intercept radar set, the APS-6, was utilized again in the 5N due to its success with the 3N. Recent changes included a GR-1 automatic pilot system and flame damper exhaust stack extensions, even though these were often removed for combat. The most interesting note about the 5N involves the late production versions, which included a mixed armament of two AN M2 20mm cannons, one on the inboard of each wing, while maintaining four Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns, two outboard on each wing. This variant of the Hellcat would outlast all other variants after World War II was over. They were actively used until late 1953.
With the almost overnight excess of military equipment and aircraft after the end of World War II in September 1945, and with the advent of jet aircraft, the soon antiquated F-6F-3 and F-6F-5s were tested as drone aircraft, drone directing aircraft, or utility tugs. These drone aircraft, mainly F-6F-5Ks and 5Ds, the director aircraft, were the last known combat use of the Hellcat for the U.S. Navy. Pilotless and radio controlled, the drones were essentially early smart bombs and acted as air-to-ground missiles. In combat, 5Ks would be equipped with bombs, launched from aircraft carriers, and attacked installations during the Korean War. An additional low production number F6F3 variant was the 3P, a photo reconnaissance conversion, with cameras installed in the rear fuselage. I could not find too much information specifically about these and their equipment. They most likely used similar equipment to the F6F5P. For the 5P, it was modified to carry two K-19 aerial cameras, one in the belly of the fuselage aft of the wing trailing edge, while the second was a recessed fuselage mount aft of the port wing trailing edge. Other than the cameras, this version differed little from the standard F6F5. It was documented that most F6F5 squadrons had at least one 5P version in the batch. Looking back at the two initial prototype orders, the XF6F1 and XF6F2, the two was not built at the same time as the XF6F1 and the XF6F3 that replaced it. After production began for the F6F3, Grumman tested a new power plant in an F6F3 pulled from production, now called the XF6F2. This new power plant, a Wright R2600 16 radial engine, was combined with a Berman turbo supercharger that was first test flown in 1943. Not proving to be satisfactory, the aircraft was re-engined with a turbocharged Pratt & Whitney R2821 and was mated with a Hamilton standard four-bladed propeller. Again, this engine was not testing with satisfactory performance and the XF6F2 was abandoned in 1944 and the aircraft was converted back to a F6F3. Note the large cowling and fuselage below the wing root for the turbocharger system. In October 1942, using the original X6F1 prototype, Grumman tested a new engine, equipping the aircraft with a Pratt Whitney R2827 radial, featuring a single stage, two speed supercharger. An additional change to this aircraft was the removal of the six Browning M250 caliber machine guns for four AN M2 20mm cannons. This prototype was successfully tested, however, never put into production. The last variant to be tested of the Hellcat was the XF6F6. Looking to improve on performance, two F6F5s were slated to be converted with a new engine. These would be equipped with a Pratt & Whitney R2818C radial and would be mounted to a Hamilton standard four-bladed propeller. Test flown in August 1944, the XF6F6 reached a top speed of 425 miles per hour. The fastest Hellcat tested was ill-fated, however. The performance of the Hellcat's already tested successor aircraft, the prototype XF-8F1 Bearcat, exceeded this variant's performance, and these Bearcats were slated for production in early 1945. The XF-6F6 would never see production. A number of unbuilt versions of the F-6F Hellcat never made it off the drawing board into the sky. Here are a few. F-6F Hellcat model with floats, the Model G54 with a low drag laminar flow wing, Model G59 with a 28 cylinder Pratt & Whitney R4360 Wasp Major radial engine with a two speed supercharger, Model G60 with the same engine as the G59 but with a two stage supercharger, Model G61 hybrid fighter concept with a turbojet engine in the tail along with the piston engine in the nose, Model G69 would be a dedicated attack variant of the Hellcat, and the FV-1, which was the proposed designation for the F6F3 Hellcats to be built by Canadian Vickers. As part of the 1942 Lend-Lease Agreement terms with the British, around 10% of all F6F Hellcat production was allocated to the Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm. Initially referred to as the Gannet, and then later switched back to the Hellcat, a total of 1,182 were sent overseas to the British. For the main variants, the count goes as follows. 
252 were F6F3s, known as the Hellcat F1 or Mark I, and 930 were S6F5s, known as the Hellcat F2s or the Mark II's. The F was a designation used for fighter. Little change from the U.S. Navy production variants of the Hellcats, but an unspecified number were fitted with four extended launch rails under each wing, for a total of eight, to carry British 60-pounder unguided rockets. As part of the Hellcat F2 batch, around 80 or so were F6F5Ns, known as the Hellcat NF2s. Additional Hellcat F2s were converted by Blackburn Aircraft for photo reconnaissance, with three cameras in the rear fuselage. Some were still armed, where others had their guns omitted. The designations were Hellcat PR2, Photo Reconnaissance Mark II, if they were unarmed, and Hellcat FR2, Fighter Reconnaissance Mark II, if they maintained their 650 caliber guns. The British would receive their first Hellcats in 1943. F1 usage by the British included operations from fleet and escort carriers in the Atlantic, notably engaging in Operation Tungsten. The April 1944 attack on the German battleship Tirpitz, where combat took place with Messerschmitt Bf 109s and Falkenwolf FW 190s, taking down three aircraft for the loss of one Hellcat. British Hellcats fought alongside American Hellcats during Operation Dragoon, the invasion of southern France in August 1944, taking down several German aircraft. In the Pacific, Hellcat F 2s made their debut for the fleet air arm in August 1944, facing the Japanese in operations around Malaya and the East Indies. A notable engagement for the British occurred during the Okinawan Campaign in April 1945, where the fleet air arm recorded their best day with the Hellcat, downing four KI-43 Oscars, a KI-61 Tony, and an A6M-0 of the island of Formosa. The British did not see the wild success with the Hellcat during the war that the Americans did, only garnering a total of 47.5 kills with all versions. The Hellcats would be taken out of main service post-1945 and would see second-rate use in the 1950s for the fleet air arm. A handful of countries acquired Hellcats after the end of World War II. France acquired more than 100 F6F5s for their Navy and Air Force. These were famously used in the first Indochina War, with the Air Force retiring Hellcats from service from 1950 to 1952, while the Navy retired them by 1955. South American navies, such as Argentina, received a small batch of Hellcats, a number of which were later passed on to Uruguay's navy. Paraguay also received a small number of Hellcats in the early 1950s, and those were retired in 1961, the last Hellcats serving actively on the globe. The Grumman F6F Hellcat was developed and put into production right as America's industrial might went into full gear. With a little more than two years of production starting in late 1942, more than 12,000 were produced to combat the Axis powers. As the staple carrier fighter aircraft on the ever-increasing number of fleet, light, and escort carriers pushing westward towards Japan in late 1943, the Hellcats were the striking force that helped make this all possible. Thanks to America's extensive pilot training program, overwhelming combat aircraft numbers, and Japan's lack of proper pilot training programs from 1943 on, the F-6F Hellcat obtained a 19 to 1 kill-loss ratio in the Pacific. This was one, if not the best kill-loss ratio of any aircraft that served in the Pacific during World War II. With more than 5,000 Japanese aerial kills, the Zero Killer, as the Hellcat was dubbed by its pilots, is considered one of the most successful aircraft in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps history. As noted, the plane saw extensive use after the war, serving in the U.S. Navy Blue Angels, as drones during the Korean War, combat aircraft for the French during the First Indochina War, and naval air power for a number of South American countries into the 1960s. To this day, the F-6F Hellcat is among the legendary aircraft of World War II. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what aircraft you would like to see covered next.